2016 was a fantastic year for Heroes of the Storm, but it's 2017 now and it's all in the record books. It's time to head into a new year, a new format and a new championship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to HGC Western Clash. That's right, it is a brand new year of Heroes of the Storm, but they've already begun around the world. We have eight teams here over the next three days, fighting from four different regions for their chance to take home the larger slice of $100,000 in prize money. That, of course, alongside their salaries that they take home already. Okay, we've also got teams from all over the world. Australia and New Zealand are represented here after Numia had a fantastic run to qualify for the HGC Western Clash. Likewise, we've got Infamous from South America, the three top teams from North America, and that's right, the old guard are back yet again from Europe, although things have changed a little bit. That's right, Misfits are seven and zero in their regular pro league at the halfway stage. They've had a fantastic and perfect start to the season, and they head into the HGC Western Clash as the favorites for the title. Alongside all of that, though, we have the new patch, Lucio Patch, is going to be used for the first time in the HGC. It's gonna be very interesting to see how that pans out as well. Lots of questions then as we head into our first day and what questions we have to answer. Are Misfits the favorites? Are they gonna stand up and fight for what they believe is their right and win a title in 2017? Are we gonna see Lucio used in the new patch? Is the beat gonna be dropped or are things gonna get a bit murky? We're gonna find out over the next three days as we head into our first day, as I said. Right now, our four real-life heroes are over at the desk with all of the answers to these and many other questions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day one of the HGC Western Clash. Welcome to the expert desk, everyone, and thank you, Red Eye. We do have many questions about this patch. My name is Solid Jake, and we are here with some of the most brilliant minds of all of Heroes of the Storm. And to my left, we have Grubby. Grubby, we've got some reworks in this patch. What are your expectations? Yeah, we're going to be playing on Lucio Patch here in the first major tournament of 2017. And some people lovingly refer to it as the Murky Patch, as Murky, our uh, lovely little frog in a bubble, has received some major reworks that makes him quite a terror on the ladder. Will we see him here in competitive? I'm not sure. I'm, whole, I'm crossing my thumbs here for it, but uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Well, you know, we also have our NA caster, Trixler, who has gone rogue and defected to Europe. But Trixler, what do you think with these regions colliding? Oh, so excited. Finally, for the first time in 2017, we get to watch worlds literally collide here. We can see who the best team is in the Western region. I am pumped. This weekend will be exciting. Last but not least, we've got Dread not at the end here in Dread. Lucio, your former pro support player, is he going to have an impact? Yes, uh, Lucio is going to have an impact in this tournament. Uh, if the general sentiment is kind of like right behind Malfury in that 2-3 slot, depending on getting the cleanse. Overall, it's safe to say we are going to have Lucio here. The question is how much, and I think that's going to change as the tournament moves up higher into the bracket. Well, guys, we have eight fantastic teams, but they did not just get invited to this event. They had to earn their way. So let's take a look at the standings from their each individual regions uh, from throughout the HGC season. So North America, Tempo Storm, Team 8, and Gale Force, the three teams representing as the top three of NA. Over in Europe, we have Misfits, Fnatic, and Dignitas as the top three, and from the Australia and New Zealand qualifier, it was Nomia that took the win rather convincingly, but going to game five, Infamous Gaming narrowly earned that spot here for Latin America, making our eight teams for this event. Of course, we have our bracket as well when you have those eight teams, and we can take a look at exactly what the format's like for this bracket as there is no group stage as some of the Heroes events do tend to be. It will be a double elimination bracket, best of three series for every single game until the finals, which will be a best of five series. And you know, with those eight teams, of course, that gives us a schedule. Today's schedule will include six matches in total. The first four of the matches are as follows. It's gonna be Team Dignitas versus Team 8, Temple Storm versus Infamous, Fnatic versus Gale Force, but the first match of the day will be Misfits versus Nomia. Exciting match coming our way. Misfits obviously having a stellar season so far in Europe. 7-0 currently with a 21-5 record. This team is the team to beat. And the thing is, they're still hungry. They want more. They want to win a regional, and they want to prove that they're the best. I mean, Misfits being the best team is 
How do you approach this strand? Is it just full on cheese? Is there any way to approach this matchup and be confident if you are that number eight seed? I, I, it's, it's tough. It's going to be tough. It's, uh, it, it's a David and Goliath situation, really, uh, between these two teams. I think uh, starting out the communication, you know, their name being no Mias, they've got to call their Mias and be on point with communication, with their synergy and their teamwork that they stand any chance here against Misfits because right now Misfits is just an overpowering force, it seems like, not only within the region, but even here at the Western Clash. Well, guys, we want to hear your thoughts on the first matchup of the evening. So head to social media, use the hashtag HGC, and let us know what you think of the first match of the day. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, but when we return, we will set the stage for the first match of the event. Welcome back, everyone, to HGC Western Clash 2017. Time now to get into our first upper bracket quarterfinal of the day. Let's introduce you to our two teams. Our first team, I think a lot of you will know who they are. They had a fantastic 2016, peaking with a championship win as well. But now in 2017, are setting the pace in Europe. They are misfits. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Misfits! And their opponents for this upper bracket quarterfinal are a team who come into this clash as the underdogs, the absolute underdogs. They do have, however, an experienced team leader to guide them through. Let's meet Nomia. <laughs> Representing Australia and New Zealand, please welcome Nomia. The stage has been set here with Nomia and Misfits taking their places here. And my goodness, Misfits, a team that, although they are the number one, I think I feel like they're still very hungry here. And Nomia, they're going to have to come out swinging if they want a chance. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you look at Misfits, and they want to prove that they can win our land. That's the biggest thing for them. You know, talking to them yesterday, they just want to come here and decisively walk away over their EU counterparts and, of course, the rest of the Western Clash. But again, Nomia, they have a chance here to really upset the brackets, if you will. Nomi is going to have to come in and be very decisive. Again, it's a best of three, uh, which means you can't hold much strategies back. You can't wait to fill out your opponents. You have to have a game plan and capitalize. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good point. The best of three here for Nomi is, uh, like, in a weird way, an advantage, but almost feels like a disadvantage. It's the most likely to be able to, you know, get the catch your opponent off guard and then be able to get a win into the series overall. But at the same time, they can't hold back. They can't wait it out. They can't get that feel and maybe be like, oh, we see a weakness within Misfits. They have to come out the gate swinging, really. 
I mean, overall, Nomi is a team that look at themselves as being all about the team fight, right? They're not about the rotations. They're yeah. not about outdrafting their opponent. They're going to play to the heroes they're most confident with and just try to have the slugfest go in their favor. Yeah, I but mean, uh, they, they were talking about their chances yesterday, and we were wondering, we sat down with them a bit, and we were wondering, do you have any... Uh, easy tactics maybe to get a quick win over a, such a formidable opponent as Misfits. And they said, we are very much going to play our own game, even coming up with advanced tactics, like cheese tactics, something easy to take them out. That is difficult as well. It requires a lot of practice. We're a little bit scarce in good practice sometimes. So we are here to learn things about our opponents. We play our game and we'll see how it goes. Well, let's see how the map selection is going to go as we are ready to go through the Battleground Bands and decide our first map of the series. So obviously our teams will have one ban each here, and then from there we will select the first battleground that we're going to. Uh, things to start thinking about, Misfits is great on Sky Temples, Towers of Doom, Dragonshire, and Infernal Shrine. So if that's the battleground that we go to in game number one, you have to worry about Nomia. Wouldn't mind seeing possibly some weird picks here. Battlefield or Eternity could be a good place for them to really mess up the play of their opponents, but the choice here will be Infernal Shrines. Nomia electing to go there. All right, Infernal Shrines, I mean, Dread, looking at this map, I mean, yes, it's a lot about the team fight. Sometimes you do see teams opt to try to play the global game and get a little bit of extra push on. But knowing these two teams, you think it's going to be very heavily focused on just winning the objective? I, I, I think for Nomia, it's probably going to be the case. I think Misfits, if the draft is too focused on the Shrine itself, I can see Misfits being very comfortable going for a split push approach, uh, the false head. Sometimes you see Silver, Zul, or a Rag try and fill that kind of role. Uh, I do think for Nomia, though, it's going to be very Shrine focused. I am very fearful knowing that they're going to this map, one that Misfits is pretty successful on, and then also knowing Kerrigan's a thing, and we got to talk about Dark Mock. Like, though it has dropped in priority, if he ends up getting onto that hero, he is a monster. Well, yeah. Misfits Dark, starting Dark. with our traditional ban here of Tassadar instantly being banned out. A very EU-heavy ban, as that is a hero that many prioritize as one of the strongest in the region. Now, Nomi on their side will get their ban. Now, Dredd, just asking you here, do you ban out someone that you know is strong for Misfits, or you just go with your own comfortable meta pick that you do back at home for ANZ? I, I think it... I, I, I would like to see them not go with comfortability. Uh, yeah. Though, I, when we got to speak to them, it seems like that was more of their game plan. You know, stick to their comforts because they think that is their most optimal performance. Uh, but again, when looking at the history between Europe and you know the rest of the world, especially with some of the smaller regions here, uh, playing your game isn't necessarily the greatest approach to have. But this draft just blasting through. Kerrigan was picked up, and then the mouth and Zeratul respond. Incredibly fast here. Nomia banning out Ragnaros, which is one of the most played heroes for Misfits. So obviously they have scouted them out. Kerrigan being picked up. Malfurion into Zeratul. Grubby, what are you thinking about this draft so far? Well, you know, Misfits, uh, they have a really high win rate when they have Ragnaros, uh, over 80%. So mm -hmm. Nomia clearly did at least some homework or have the same idea about the patch heroes here. Uh, another cool thing is that when you have Zeratul on your team, you're removing something very powerful from Misfits. But the cool thing uniquely about Zeratul, he has a great comeback mechanic. No matter how many levels down you are, if you suffer in the early game, one Void Prism into Twilight Dream and whatever else comes after it, can potentially turn the game. In this draft right now for Misfits, the Sylvanas Tyrael rotation has just transferred their composition I mean, I, I, into an absurdly what I call win harder strategy. Kerrigan is going to be a monster when it comes to shrine control. Sylvanas is going to be the backup. You get the objective, she makes sure you get an insane amount of value. This just went from like a, okay, you got to be afraid of the Kerrigan to where if you mess up against the Kerrigan, you are going to lose far more than you traditionally would afford. We're looking for, I'm talking like 10 minute keeps at this point, yeah. if you make one major mistake. I mean, historically, we've seen that happen in these mis mismatches where one team does feel they are the better team. They can just snowball so hard with Sylvanas. How do you counteract that on the side of Nomia? Nomia right now is just going with the strategy of just doing a comfort pick. Zeratul is Fat94's best hero that he believes in. He solidly believes in his play there, and Malfurion, of course, being one of the best supports he can pick up in the game. And then Nomi actually banning out the Jaina. You're talking about how, what do you answer into this? It's killing the Kerrigan. Remove the Shrine control. Be able to win the Shrine itself. And I can't help but feel like into the mouth and having the Zeratul, when I, killing the Kerrigan, Jaina's going to be one of those best heroes. So already it feels like that might hurt them a little bit, but I hope they have a strategy. And that's like the Diablo ban. You can't kill the Kerrigan because Diablo is such a frontline killer here on Infernal Shrine. So Misfits, very heads up ban there. So I feel like that ban phase has really set Nomia behind already in this draft. Now, yesterday when we were speaking with Nomia, they said that Misfits is the most likely winner of the tournament. And they also said that in their first match against Misfits, they are just going to pick their comfort heroes. Uh, Normally, I would say you're against Kerrigan here in the second pick rotation. You're going to consider something like a Medivh. 
Medivh is excellent at blocking the burst damage that Kerrigan can bring out with her combo, but I don't know if Nomia really has had enough practice with him. They haven't shown Medivh at all in their history. No. In fact, normally around these slots, they would pick up a Vala and probably one of their main tanks, which would be ETC or Muradin. So if they're staying with Comfort Picks, those would probably be our next couple of pickups. But do you get pick up Vala here, or do you see maybe a Gul'dan being mixed up instead so you can help out with the wave clear? See, with the Medivh argument, I like Gul'dan. But yeah. without the Medivh, oh, no. the counter initiation is going to be very, very difficult here. I'm very concerned for Nomia here. You're going up against Kerrigan and Tyrael, and you draft second and third backline with Malfurion being one of them. Here you have a triple damage, triple backline team in Nomia picking into something. Okay, you can call it Comfort Heroes, but it is not comfortable to have this against what Misfits has. All right, guys, we got to talk about the Curse Bullet, the new heroic hero that Greymane has as they've just locked him in. It's a playmaker. We've, he we've heard a lot of talk about it. And considering their tank is likely going to be a solo frontline of like Johanna or ETC, that's going to put so much pressure on him. Yeah, yeah, it's very frightening, especially with the setup from Kerrigan. It's yeah. easily Curse Bullet to hit. And it only amplifies the Shrine Control even more. Going into the flash build onto the Greymane, that's going to be very easy poke post seven, and then Kerrigan is going to, she now has somebody to be able to secure that damage before she even throws out the combo here. Right now, Misfits has what I would consider near a flawless like composition when it comes to Infernal Shrines. They have a lot of synergy. They have got a lot of consideration to the map um, overall in just the rotations. This is a very devastating draft, and Nomia here has to find some answers. My first thought is avoid the Shrine and split push, but then looking into, you know, the Sylvanas existing elsewhere. Falstead is only the really redeeming quality and maybe baiting the Falstead with a Zeratul bait, but overall, like, Misfits far and above, in my opinion, in this draft. Now, besides the chances for Nomia, which were low to begin with, and seeing the draft, but potentially we estimate them even to be lower, I want to talk a little bit about the Falstad figure. We had a humorous moment when we sat down with Nomia yesterday. In one of their qualifying matches for this tournament, Falstad went for Hinterland's Blast, a decision he made in the middle of the game without consulting his teammates, which he thought could be fun, could be effective. They were against Vikings, and Falstad now has a cooldown reduction element on Hinterland's Blast. I don't think you take that here against Kerrigan, probably. You need to blow away the enemy team. <laughs> the, worst part, he does. the worst part about it is even if you manage to get it off, you have to dodge the Sanctification because the Sanctification won't even get the reset. Every single target, not only will you not get the damage, you'll lose the cooldown. That's right. like almost reduction. more devastating than <laughs> losing the Heroic in the first place. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I would avoid it at all costs. And I promise you, Dark Mock on Kerrigan, you're going to want to run. You need that Gust. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need the Mighty Gust here just to slow down time anyways with Sylvanas constantly pushing in. Remember the 10-minute key being talked about here with Dreadnought. The way to deal with that is to get away from the fight, and Mighty Gust will bring that. You know, Dredd, I wanted to talk to you about the Kerrigan pickup here because although Kerrigan has always thrived on this battleground in particular, she hasn't seen as much play with heroes like Sonya rising in their power. Uh, do you think that's just a confidence play, or are they trying to uh, just show that, yes, we do very much have Kerrigan available? I, th I think the Kerrigan effect that we've kind of seen has come down to the... Uh, healthier heroes have uh, become more popular into the meta, making her kill potential a little bit lower, but that's the main reason. All right, guys, well, we are ready to start game number one. Take it away, Kaldor and Tetcher. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number one of this best of three series. I am Tetcher, and I am joined by the lovely Kaldor, who is going to introduce your first team for you. We have to the left side the German Bulgarian team, the European team. It is, of course, Misfits with Hazovs playing here on the Sylvanas. We're currently seeing Dartmouth on the Kerrigan. Nurok is playing Greymane. Blumby on Tyrael. And as a support player, Splendor is playing Rhaegar. Whereas on the right hand side, they have a lot to prove, but they have so much passion. It is Nobia. We have Robadoba on that Muradin. We have Fat94 playing the Zeratul. Felsad in the top lane, being played by Arcana. And in the bot lane, it is going to be John playing Gul'dan and Vanilla playing the Malfurion. And while we're having a quick break here, there's a couple of things that we really have to talk about. Of course, our analysts have already uh, talked a lot about the compositions here, but I want to throw a few stats in just for good measure. Misfits, of course, they had a fantastic series so far in Europe, or a fantastic season. And just two of the heroes that they're playing here, Rhaegar, they have a 10 and 1 map win ratio on the hero, and Anterior, they have a 7 and 1. <laughs> so two of their real comfort picks made it through the draft, and Nomia will have a tough time here. Yeah, Misfits kind of being the exception when it comes to Rhaegar. A lot of teams very, very much focusing on the Malfurion, whereas Misfits, they can let it go sometimes, and they just dominate with it. Tychus being the other hero, where they just absolutely dominate with it, where other teams might not have the kind of win ratio they look for. So right now, 
Little bit of a group up in the bot lane. Looks like Sylvanas does want that early tower, but no one's helping her. Instead, they are making sure she doesn't get ganked. Yeah, at this point, of course, Nomi I will just have to make sure that they are playing a solid game here. And that's actually something that they've been talking about a lot. They have been talking to us about what they are planning for the tournament here. And they want to make sure that they win at least one series. They want to make sure that they show up and just show their best. And as they put it, I'm quoting here, they want to make sure that they don't shit the bed. Yep, this is a, this is a exact quote from them. Uh, and it's a good thing. They very much seem to focus the team fight style, but me and you were both a little bit confused as to the Jaina ban. Yeah. So maybe what the casters were, uh, what the analysts were talking about a little bit earlier of the Hinterland Blast, yes, you're going to miss out on that counter engage, but what else do they really have to follow up on a Void Prism? Uh, it's actually something that they have to show us here. The Jaina would, of course, have been great with the Zaratula as a combo with a Void Prism into the Ring of Frost. But one of the things that I want to point out right off the bat here is on the false set, we have Season Marksman. Now, of course, you can engage that with a couple of different comps on the hero or uh, builds, but right now they will look to go into Giant Killer on 13 oh, to put some pressure onto the false liner. Nicely done, killing Falstad, getting first blood with the cocktail over the wall, stunning Falstad with that Kerrigan combo. Beautiful play, Misfits immediately take advantage. They know Zeratul can't 1v4, <laughs> so instead they're just going to take all of this front gate and then they're going to rotate again. Tyrael currently holding the XP in two separate lanes. Yeah, that was incredibly well done by them. False that he thought he was safe there, barreling over the wall, but in that case, Misfits just jump on their chance with Karrigan to get the combo in. And as you pointed out, Zeratul can't do anything against this. Just look at it. They are just crushing through the top lane. The Shrine is now activating in a few seconds, but at the top, the fort is gone, Thatcher. The fort is gone indeed. The totem is going to be off cooldown very shortly as well. So they're still going to basically have everything. The only thing they are currently low on is mana on Greymane and Rhaegar, which is slowly restoring up. They're just going to get huge advantage. 10 out of 40 already. And level 4 has only just been hit by Nomia. Yeah, exactly. And with Nomia hitting the level 4 this late, it gave Misfits a couple of seconds where they could just go onto the shrine uncontested. Nomia is moving in right now as they have the same talent level, but they're already 20 minions behind. They are in a rough position. They are starting to catch up very slowly, but like you said, they are in a really tough position right now. It is a Q build by the Gul'dan, by the way, so that's going to get some crazy damage if he can stack it up. Lumbi gets rooted, stunned up. They're going to try and take him down, and they get him. He's going to immediately turn around and try and take some damage off to Malfurion and get a lot of skeletons. Well, it was a good kill by Nomia, and now Misfits has to be a bit careful. Tyrael going down in a big team fight is, of course, something that you're not too worried about. You're trying to get some value out of the trade and then can still snowball the fight. But with Misfits getting this solid lead early on with a minion stack, they still get the Punisher and they're jumping in again. Punisher baited over the wall, but still the lockdown here against Robadoba for a moment. And that looked grim, but he is able to escape. Yeah, Robadoba caught in that Punisher route, but there was no follow-up. Misfits instead focusing on getting that XP. Darkmok considering jumping in onto Gul'dan there, but deciding better of it. Fat going so aggressive onto Hasselwops. Now they try to get Robadoba in exchange, but either way, no deaths in that particular engage. Very nice value still with the Sylvanas here going through the entire wall and putting additional pressure onto the fort itself. So Misfits off to a great start in the series. Yeah, they are looking solid as we expected them to. But Robotoba currently a level behind, but this is not an insurmountable lead in this scenario. The talent, however, is going to be difficult. They need to soak up, make sure they have enough XP to make sure that they can get level 7 before the next objective spawns, which they have plenty of time to do. You can actually already see how confident Misfits is here. They just sneak in and take the camp of the opponent. They're completely dominating this. Oh. off going deep. He goes deep, but he's taken oh. apart by Nomia. Good kill for the ANZ team. Yeah, John just tanking through that. He stood his ground and made it so Kerrigan had to stay. They turned it around onto Hasuops. The great rotation from Arcana. It's now three kills to one, Kaldor, and we are seeing Nomia begin to catch up in XP. Misfits has to be very careful that they don't get condescending. They have a great start into the game. They get the Punisher and they are able to push with Sylvanas. And this, of course, it can be a very snowball map. The problem really is if they go too deep and Nomia gets the kills, then that experience advantage that they gathered is completely negated. And this is what we're seeing here, allowing Nomia for the next shrine to just fight in full force on even talents and levels. So Misfits, they need to be a bit careful here. So Gul'dan with a little bit of a safer talent that you do with this build, sometimes with the improved life tap, as opposed to the extra ability power with reduced healing. If you are confident you can stay in the back line, then that talent can be a little more preferable. But in this case, he needs all the healing he can get to survive that kind of burst. So I do like this. He was also yeah. taken bound by Shadow, which 
doesn't combo super well, but it's still extra damage. It's still getting all of those corruptions up. Yeah, Gul'dan, of course, is also looking at that wave play on the shrine itself then, and there's a lot of damage output that we have for Nomia. We already saw that in those fights. The one thing that we have to really watch out for are the level 10s then. We've already heard the analysts talk a bit about the Curse Bullet on Greymane, and together with a potential setup of a Kerrigan, this could be spelling disaster for any hero that is caught in the fray. So Nomia will have to be very cautious once that Misfits hits their rogue abilities. Yeah, Nomia do have a slight XP lead though, but Misfits using that Kerrigan to full effect, getting a big head start on the Shrine. Nomia look like they kind of want to soak it up and they were waiting for Falstad. Falstad arriving in, Fat getting some good damage onto Nurok, is able to escape Robert over, causing some good chaos. And John only really able to get Tyrael in terms of his Fell Flames, so not able to get a huge amount there. But Nomia are just beginning to force a position onto the Shrine so they can actually get an advantage here. They're still too far away from 10 for it to appear in this fight. Nomia went very late on the Shrine, and that's the problem for them. They're far behind in the stacks, and they're trying to keep Misfits off the Shrine, but it doesn't work. Once again, Darkmog and his boys are getting the control here in the last few final minions that they need for the Punisher. And keep in mind, this oh, is actually wow. the lane where the fourth fell early on in the game, and now with Sylvanas, with level 10s, only half a level away, Misfits could potentially, if everything goes perfectly, look at a keep here. Yeah, we saw a little bit of vision gained over the wall thanks to that Earth Grass totem from Rhaegar. Looking to see if Kerrigan can get the advantage of the Punisher with the bait jump there. He makes it over this time, starts attacking Muradin, who pulls it over quite nicely, pulls it over to the fountain side as opposed to the turret side where they have a bit more mo uh, room to maneuver. But level 10s available for Misfits. They will very soon be available for Nomia. And look at Fat's positioning. Yeah, and revealed. Nicely done. This is dangerous part right now. This is really dangerous for Nomia. Now they have the level 10s. Oh, right, really and they might be able to get the kill. But in this case, Misfits actually learning the lesson a little bit from that last fight, just saying, guys, yes. if we push this with Sylvanas, maybe we get something here, but let's just not risk it. The backlash, if it fails, is just way too difficult for us to handle. So they make a smart choice, they take the ball, they take the experience, and then they slowly fall back. Yeah, so the analysts are, were 100% right. We are seeing the cursed bullet here, which is going to be devastating if timed correctly. Fat with a little bit of harass. Boy Prism is dropped on three members. The Twilight Dream could combo with this. The Brew is used. It only gets the Grey Maiden with immediately. White Tyrell goes in, drops the sack. Here comes the assimilation. Trying to get Fat, but over the wall. Zeratul with the micro. Very well done here. And once again, we have another kill for Nomia. That was a very nice isolation that we saw. And then also using Gul'dan's heroic ability to just isolate the hero, take him down. And with Greymane dead, that means that a lot of the damage that they have in these fights is missing. He's the main damage dealer for them at this point. And as you can see here, the talent has already completed. The quest talent of Gul'dan is now finished. Nomia in those fights, looking pretty decent so far. They are looking super solid there. I would have kind of liked to see the Twilight Dream as the follow-up, but instead, using the Horrify, they were able to completely isolate the uh, Greymane, like you said, and just get absolute control from it. And even with the Maelstrom, Kerrigan could only get onto uh, Zeratul, who just blinks away. This team fight style that Nomia have said that they feel so confident in is really working out in their favor, but they do need to win objectives to win the game. They're yeah. about to lose their second four. The pressure that Misfit still builds up, even though they are behind in kills, is very impressive. And Nomia actually like scrimmed a little bit yesterday against some of the American teams, and it was public scrim, so both of the teams didn't really show their best drafts, so didn't like go all out there. But it was really telling that Nomia was able to, a huge part, to actually play on the same level as their opponents. So they are yeah. playing in a region that makes it a bit more difficult for them to find decent good practice and also have a lot of scrim partners, but they still show up in force here and they have the skills and also just like what they need to really show up in these games and that's what they're trying to do. But again, they are late on the shrine. They're having force it up oh. at the top. They need to fight. The Void Prison is there. The Sanctification is ready in two seconds. It's not being activated, though. Damage is being dropped. The Ancestral gets Haswabs, though. He stays alive. Robert over in full retreat. Malfurion is dropping low. The Gust was not able to save him. Bloopy is going hard. He's going to get taken out. He's going to explode onto John. Very nearly gets fat there. Not John has to retreat, though. But thanks to that death, it's a one for one. And Misfits dropping everyone so low, they're easily able to take control of the Shrine. And that was a bit of a misplay there with the coordination for Nomia. They had False Set way too long up at the top. If False Set is present when the Void Prison is being dropped, they will get way more than the kill. And they will also secure the kill against Sylvanas, which didn't happen since Splendor had enough time to drop the Ancestral. So Nomia in these fights has to really show up as five and take them. Now they need to split Zeratul off for the extra experience at the top lane, what we're currently seeing here, since they realize without their healer, they have no chance of saving the fort. They will make their stand at the keep. 
Yeah, and we are seeing a very misfit style talent here of Viscerate. This is going to allow Darkmok to get into that backline and try and get some isolation. A little bit of damage dropped onto Robodoro. He's tanking through, though, as Muradin is one to do. They're definitely going to get the wall here, but pretty sure the keep will be able to survive unless Kerrigan can use that range. The very early gust there, but those Sentinels are dropping people low. It's a safe move. Oh, Kerrigan gets the double back. Lens, though, just turns it round and drops huge damage. Very well done here. Also with the 13 talents healing static now, Muradin is going to give him a huge boost in terms of survivability. We down. have the giant killer for false set. They keep falling, as you already pointed out, and Misfits retreating. So you can see that even with that lead in kills that Nomia has, Misfits still calls the shots in the game. Yeah, Misfits just in absolute dominant fashion are winning every objective. And there is no answer from Nomia to that engage because they used the gust so early instead. Even though they were able to save Gul'dan, they were too low to actually end up fighting. And as such, Misfits took position, used Sylvanas, and took care of that key. I'm really curious to see how Nomia is going to play for the next shrine now, because the last three shrines, they showed up very late, and every single time, Misfits got a lead in the minion stacks. And in a lot of these fights, Nomia just didn't start and engage into the battle with five people. Oh, so they need the to make sure that they go in with five. Has trouble! The answer is just one second second to late. It was such a close call here. The backlight Twilight Dream was good. Splendor, though, is focused down by Fat Twilight Dream and the Horrifier trying to focus Tyrael. Dark <laughs> getting some good damage with the Maelstrom. Tyrael's out of position, but the Sanctification will protect him. Dark Rock dives in, but the Sidekick smiles, and he gets wiped. Wow, the Australians really showing up here. I'm liking it. It's so good. I am so happy this is great. <laughs> <laughs> They're showing zero respect here. They just go. <laughs> they said in the interviews, they said Misfits is their candidate to take the tournament. They are saying, hey, Misfits, they will win the entire thing. We are here to show our strength, though. We want to do as much as we can. And they show no respect whatsoever for the European opponent. They go in and they are just taking fight after fight. And they're looking good doing it. Yeah, no, no, yet. They've managed to take their first fort of the game. They are playing their game, though. That's the thing. The longer this game goes on, the better it's going to be for Nomia. Because if they can keep that bottom lane protected and not lose too many more keeps, eventually, those kills are going to start adding up and they're going to be able to have enough respawn times to take down some really important misfit structures. Also, quickly pointing out that Fawcett has currently 34 stacks on his season marks, wow. so he is going to complete the talent, uh, the quest talent very soon. Once that happens, there will be even more pressure onto the front line in particular. So this can really help them to just burst the hero down. And you can really tell that this has been one of the major objectives for them. The Horrifies have been on point. I mean, they every time so good. you see either the Void Prison or the Horrify being used to just make sure that they can get a kill, in the last second Splendor in this last fight got the Ancestors go through anyways, but they still lost the battle. So Nomia, yeah. even with a talent advantage, is now on the Shrine. Indeed, Darkmog, even, uh, sorry, Haswolves, even though he was able to micro into a good position to make sure that he was able to get the Ancestral and put himself in an advantageous spot, the Gust immediately countered that and they just got absolutely Absolutely divided and absolutely conquered. Now we're seeing a bit of an engage there. No one really committing. Zeratul, though, drops the Void, void prison. prison. And as such, doesn't get Feral lunged and immediately is able to pull back. But there's no follow-up for this one. And that means that's a big heroic not available. That's a huge cooldown that they just used for this one. The Curse Puller has been used as well. Once again, with Meridian jumping in. The Ancestor goes through. The Horrify comes in. Oh, the Tyrion! Tyrion! Tyrion saves it for now as Carrigan engages once more. There comes the Silence Misfits in full Let's retreat. Uh, dropping down. He gets Fell Flame. Down goes Carrigan. Bloopy speed boost himself for freedom. Robotoba's going deep. He wants Hasu, but he realizes his team, they can get the objective. They need to defend bot. They have things to do. Do not tunnel vision, Nomia. At this point, like the bottom keep that has fallen earlier, of course, produces the catapults now to push straight for the core. But Nomia have a good shot at taking the first Punisher in the game, and they will secure this one easily. Uh, just as a reminder, Greymane has managed to fully stack his Incendiary Elixir, though, so there's going to be some very strong damage output coming from him. But right now, Misfits are going sneaky. Misfits at this point trying to set up a little bit of a trap. They identified Falset at that top lane, who had to move down to just deal with these catapults. So they are lying in a nice trap. I love yeah, how Falset is playing this cautious. I am loving this. A lot of players would have just moved in, disregarding the danger, and just simply died there. But Falset yeah. is taking the long now path. Now on his way. Kena is moving in. The Punisher already baited over the wall, and they're trying to go for a keep and take this one down. Misfits, on the other hand, they will do oh, everything they can in. to prevent this. Yeah, Heroic's only Gust is available. Horrify just came off, but everything else is on low cooldowns. If they can delay this, then they're good. But with the Punisher already down, this push is looking like it's over. 
Misfits looking for something to punish. But now heroics are available. Everything except Twilight Dreams. So they need to be careful. Damage onto Bloomby, who shields himself very nicely, so isn't punished very hard. I am loving what they're doing here. But once again, Nomi, I had to move back before the keep is down. Misfits, they really need to control these fights a little bit better. And at this point, it looks like Nomia just has a setup that allows them to always get these isolation kills. Even with that earlier, just dropping that Void Press maybe a little bit too early, they were still able to take down heroes and completely have Misfits on the run. With a keep at the bot lane, putting constant pressure though against the core, that might be something where Misfits can just like sneak up to the top, to the mid and get some structure value. But they are still behind in experience. Yeah, Misfits, even though st they are still behind, look at the map control they are showing because Falstaff yeah. is doing an amazing job in terms of controlling that bot lane while still joining his team for the really important pushes, but it does mean they have a little less pressure on the map from time to time. Misfits has already identified that Fawcett might actually be a weak point. If he just moves into one of these pushes at the wrong moment, he is just going to be blown up. So Misfits is always lurking in the shadows, trying to see if they can maybe get one of these isolation kills. But at this point, they're just pushing their own top lane. This is, of course, all about the looming level 20 now, about the next shrine. This is what really matters. And let's not forget about Sylvanas here. We've been talking about her a lot at the beginning of the game, but if at this point a Punisher is taken by Misfits, they can push to the core. Yes, and if it's in bot lane, then it's obviously a really advantageous position anyway, but the Sylvanas allows them to do this in any lane. It's going to be the mid lane, which is actually a little bit better for Nomia than it would have been in either of the other lanes. If it was bot lane, obviously there's no keep. That's a really rough position for them. If it's in top lane, then bot lane is suddenly much further away and they have a much worse position defending it. This is the best possible position for Nomia to try and fight this. Well, one of the things that we have to still point out is that we still see the uh, well in the mid lane. So for Misfits, they still have the opportunity to just move back, tap at the well real quickly, and then engage into the battle again. There's a very short distance to safety for Misfits right now. That can make a huge difference here. And Nomia is actually they waiting for the 20. Up. They want to have 20, and Misfits is saying, we're going to use that time to get stacks. They are hoping to sneak in a Punisher before Nomia can hit the final and tell him. Well, there is 20. They're only halfway through, and Robodo but goes so aggressive. Falstaff's not there. He needs to fly. The Misfits are backing up here. We have a very quick pause. But 22 uh, skeletons so far taken by Misfits. That is good. If they can take down Hero or at least regain position, they're probably going to get the objective. Yeah, but they shouldn't be able to get in here. At this point, Nomia with a level 20 should really try to just completely shut Misfits out of the shrine. Yeah. And I actually doubt that Misfits is going for it because think about it just for a moment. The, the, the worst case scenario, if Nomia really gets that Punisher right now, is you lose the fort in the mid lane, you're probably able to still gather some experience, maybe even hit the 20 at some point, but you will at least be able to stop them before for their core. If you lose heroes on the other hand and you have Punisher and you lose the Punisher regardless, that's a completely different story. So I personally think that Misfits is going to play this a bit safer. And is that looks like exactly what they are going to do. They're moving down to the uh, mercenary camp, the Kazaras, down in the bottom jungle area and they can clear up the push that Nomia set up earlier. But this is going to be an objective for Nomia. There's still a fort here, like you said, so they have a lot of, poten a lot of pushing to do to make a huge amount of value out of this. But it's something. They have 20, they need to push as hard as they possibly can with this to force a reaction from Misfits, because Misfits, they're not even 19 yet, Kaldor. Yeah, we have Epic Mount taken, by the way, for False Set, and uh, to be quite frank, if the keep at the bot lane is not destroyed for them, I could have seen them go into Frenzy here, because the yeah. damage output would be absolutely insane, and this map caters a little bit more towards Nexus Frenzy, but with False Set having to just deep push the lanes all the time, it makes sense for them to try and just have the additional uh, mobility that he now has. There's yeah. the Punisher now moving through, though. Great job by Bloom, be baiting that in. But of course, the fort is forfeit. Now it's all about, can they defend the key? Yeah, and they're beginning to push in. We're seeing Nomia aggressive. Every heroic is available. They have Bolt of the Storm now, so Mafurian has that potential for follow-up on the, uh, the Void Prism. If they can land it, the double rewinds from Zeratul and the Muradin and the aggression. The keep is getting kind of wrecked here. Robodoba with perfect zoning. This is such a difficult position for Misfits to be in, and they do it well. perfectly, actually. They force the Punisher to the top, but here comes the engage. Oh, the Void Prism is on the ground. Malfurion with the runes. Oh, and the silence! Very well timed, but immediately the Mighty Gust and Nomia is moving back. Misfits gets out without losing a hero. Arcada with the reaction times there. That was an incredible way to go out by Haskell. He was like, okay, I really need to save my friends here. But Arcana with the reaction, he's like, 
Oh, uh, okay, I should absolutely try and stop our team losing the game here by getting wiped at our own at the enemy court. Arcana, once again, has also just come back and has protected his court. Arcana is one of the stars of this game. To be absolutely honest with you, I'm not even sure he needed to gust there. It really looked like the timing wasn't quite perfect for the Wailing Arrow. It would have probably prevented Nomia from getting a kill on the back of the Void Prison, but it really felt like even just like letting the gust stay, they could have maybe picked up a kill. They still have that two-level lead. They had the level 20. So I think that was actually a little bit premature here. If you want to play it super safe, if you are scared that you're losing heroes, then by all means, just go for it. But I personally feel they could have maybe gotten something there. They would have had Horrify very shortly afterwards. Yeah. Wailing Arrow is still currently unupgraded, although it's very unlikely they are going to take the upgrade anyway. But it is still super interesting. Like you said, they could have risked it, but Nomia, they're in the situation which we see a lot of teams at land take, and that is we really don't want to lose at land. So you see teams play a little bit more cautiously. I mean, no matter how this game ends, currently they are the favorite to win the first map and they are doing really well here, much better than a lot of people expected. Yeah. We're talking about EU versus North America all the time. Look at Australia here for a moment. This... Oh, Arcana from across the map. There's the gun. They focus. <laughs> what a play. The fear used by Gul'dan. That was a perfect split. Now they're moving in. Five versus four. They have two catapults and two Kazaras. They're beginning to try and put some pressure on. They still have... Void Prism, they still are trying to... They can still find us! The Void Prism is used, they're going for the Cork outdoor. They're going for the Cork as we green. speak. The Catapults are attacking as well. Once again, we see Kerrigan in Texas. Ancestral goes through. Splat down with the heal of the Cork, taking damage down to 80%. 70! Australia goes the for the victory! They're gonna take it, Texas! Darbos kills the Catapults, takes down Gul'dan, but it's not enough! GG! And Nomia take game number one against Europe's number one seed. What a game here, and now, of course, the big question. Did Misfit just simply underestimate them and will show up with a much different strategy right now? Or are we going to see our first massive upset if Misfit actually loses the second see. map? Look at them, they're, they're, they look happy, but Stone Cold Killers, they, they are be happy. focused. That they was amazing, ready. I love this. This was actually really well played by them. Great job, Binomia. I this is an incredible surprise, but an incredible game. And to tell you about some of the things we saw in it, we're going to send you back to our expert's desk. All right, when we spoke to Nomia before today, what they said to us is when we go up against Misfits, just roll the clip. We're going to do what we can, just roll the clip. That's the exact quote. And they rolled the clip all right. Impressive. You know, they came out and mentioned that they want to find where they stand as a roster. And granted, it's only one game right there, but it starts to get the wheel turning. We start to wonder, could they be someone here that can compete and really stand amongst the great? Yeah, what a way to start the HGC Western Clash with most of the teams naming Misfits, the number one favorite for this tournament, and Nomia, the unmentioned team almost, winning the first game here with nine to three in takedowns. Like, I couldn't be happier how wrong uh, you know, we were to think that they had no chance. I, my favorite part about it is not just getting the win, right? Like, it wasn't like the, oh, they went for the core, we have an awkward 2% moment. It was dominance yeah. coming out from them. Every single time that there was a lack of coordination on the side of Misfits, they fully capitalized. Every single time, Nomia, just, they, the synergy and, and taking advantage of the anti-synergy on the side of Misfits, it was just insane. A totally new team. Now, I will say that there were a few moments where it looked like Misfits was kind of pushing uh, their, their, their status, yeah. uh, their strength. They were like, okay, let's go Kerrigan, let's jump over the walls. It worked the first time, it didn't work the second time. But from that moment onwards, it's like you said, it's not like, oh, you've given us everything. No, they took it. Uh, they, they jump in with the foul set, they get the takedowns. The coordination was good. And for all of their lackadaisical approach uh, in the pregame interviews with us, in just their general demeanor, this didn't look lackadaisical. This looked dominant. You know, Dredd, we had a pretty crazy last fight where they totally had that potential to end it. You thought the defense might not work because Gust was down. Let's walk through it once more. It's actually a beautiful start to the last team fight uh, here that we're going to take a look at. And a lot of it comes down to how they approach this. So number one, it's going to be the flight here onto any target going to be out of position. They're going to look for the pick. Right now, it looks like it, they're setting their eyes on, is it going to be Nurok? Is it going to be Dark Mock? In fact, there Horrible. it is. There's the rewind. Getting and killed. The Gust to push the rest away, too. Yeah, it's beautiful. The most important thing here, though, is watching Sylvanas. Hasuwabs getting killed is a huge reason why they're going to be able to secure the game with the Void. Up top, False Dead, Arcaner there, gets in the 1v1 and just obliterates Hasuwabs, removing all the defensive tools, and then Void countered the Sanctification. Perfect timing. They could not have executed the initiation of ending that game any better. It was almost textbook. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the takedowns uh, looks great, the fights look great, but the thing that I'm most impressed about, generally, when you look at a team that has a little bit less international experience in, for example, John and Vanilla, two members here for Nomia who haven't played at a big international tournament yet, you take these difficult drafts with Gust, Void Prison, Horrify, and you're just gonna mess it up like eight out of 10 times. That's what I expect. It's like, oh, Horrify into Gust, what a pity. We just don't have the coordination yet. I think we could be there with more practice, but this didn't look like it. The perfect false start fly in time as the Stormbolt hit on Greymane with the Gust into Horrify, there was not a thing that was wrong about that fight. It was wonderful. Well, a beautiful start here from Nomia versus Misfits in the very first game of the event. We're going to get ready for game number two. Stay tuned. I, uh, I did not expect that. No. What? That game. No. I don't know. I don't think anyone Even did. Also, on the replays, are we going to make it a full group effort or a three-man effort, like a draft, or are we going to do it like a one? It's, it's hard to tell. I, I wasn't sure how long of a replay that yeah, was going I, to I be. Yeah, I didn't know either. Like, so, like, I, I think just four? keep it with the flow because I... Okay. 